Hi, today I will show you the next part of controlling the FX3 UPLC with the SP32. In this video, I will show you how to work with the FX3 UPLC analog input, and later we will show you how to work with the stepper motor. First, let me show you the connection diagram. As you can see I did connect my variable power supply to the FX3 UPLC analog input channel 0. Please note that the analog input of PLC is 12 bit 0 to 10 volt. So I won't try to set my power supply voltage beyond 10 volts. To make the project more interesting, we will utilize the wireless network connection ability of ESP32. In this case, I will also make ESP32 work as a bridge between PC to PLC as well. So we can remote access the PLC from my PC. Ok let's work on the PLC analog input. In this example, I will read the analog input channel 0 every 10 milliseconds, and put the data to the D0 register. I will switch back to GX developer and add room here. This time I will try to use the text editor to add the PLC code. I will add the commenter statement here to make it easy to navigate through the PLC code later on. We will start with loading a special register M8011, which is a timer register that triggers every 10 milliseconds, and then sets the output to instruction RD3AK0, which is module number K0, is the analog input CHA and NEL1, and stores the reading into the D0 register. I will download the code to PLC, and turn on the power supply. Let enable the monitor mode, we should see the D0 value change when I crank up and down the voltage on my power supply. I will set my power supply voltage to 5 volts. The PLC analog input reading should be around 2047, but we get reading around 1982, which is off quite a bit. Let me change the voltage to a different voltage to see if the D0 register change. Next, we will be working on the ESP32 code. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we will try to remote control the PLC with the SP32 via UDP protocol. So now the example source code will be based on the UDP example of the SPIDF. Because the SP32 will need to connect to your wireless network, you will need to set up your own SSID and password. Let me show you how to do it. First, you will need to run the command itf.py menu config. Then go to example connection configuration, then update the SSID and wireless password. After you finished updating the SSID and password, hit escape and make sure you save the configuration. Let me explain the code that I wrote. First, I will add the D0 register object in my ESP32 code here. Please ignore the PLC D32 reg for now I will explain to you later on. Inside the while loop, the code will read the D0 register and print out the value on the screen when the D0 register value has been changed. I compile the code and download it to the ESP32. First when you run the code please check what is the IP address of ESP32 and write it down. Because later on, we will try to remotely connect to that IP address. Let's try to change the power supply voltage to see if the ESP32 is printing out the updated voltage. Well, seem it is working. As I was talking about remote access of FX3 UPLC using UDP protocol. Here is a list of commands that I added in the code. So basically, you will send the command string to ESP32 via UDP protocol port number 3333 in this example. There are six commands as I show here. First command RM is the command to read M register. The command starts with RM follow with PLC station number, then COM and follow with register number. The ESP32 will query the M register from PLC, and response back the value of corresponding M register. 1 is on and 0 is off. Second command SM is the command to set M register. The command starts with SM, followed by PLC station number, followed by register number and last is the state of M register that you want to set to. 1 is for on state and 0 is for off state. Third command RD is the command to read D register. The ESP32 will query the PLC D register and return 16 bits value of the corresponding register. Fourth command SD is the command to set D register. You can use this command to pass 16 bits value to the corresponding PLC D register number. Fifth command RW is the command to read D register in 32 bits. So basically it will read a pair of D registers. For example if we send command RW12, the ESP32 will query the D2 and D3 register, and return 32 bits value of a pair register. 
The last command SW is the command to set the register in 32 bits. I will use this command later when we work with stepper motor command. This is a simple UDP client protocol that I wrote. You can get the source code of this program from the link below. Let's run this software. Now we need to input the IP address of ESP32 here and click the connect button. I will try to send the command to read M0. As you can see the ESP32 respond back. Now let's try to read the D0 register which is analog input channel 0. I think it should give the value around 1905. Yeah, it works. Now it comes to the last part, working with stepper motor. Here is the diagram showing how I connect the stepper motor. I will use the TB6600 stepper driver here. And I got the stepper motor from my broken printer. I will connect 24 volts DC to drive the stepper motor and connect the ground back to the power supply and the PLC. I will use Y0 of PLC outputs for stepper pulse and use Y1 of PLC outputs for direction. For the pulse and direction on the stepper driver, even though it labels as 5 volts, but you can use 24 volt to connect to them. You will need to have 3 kilo ohm resistors to limit the current go through the driver and PLC outputs. Next, let's talk about the PLC instructions for stepper motors. I will use the move absolute command as shown here. As you can see there are two types of commands, one is 16 bits instruction, and one is 32 bits instruction. In this example, I will use 32 bits instruction. The differences are the data type of S1 and S2 which is 32 bits for DDRVA instruction. For 32 bits you can set more range of output pulses, and speed compared to 16 bits. In FX3 UPLC there are number 32 bits of the D register, to use 32 bits PLC will use a pair of D registers. For example, if you use the D2 register as 32 bits it means PLC will use D2 and D3 together. Now we will go back to GX Developer and add the ROM to control the stepper motor. Let's me add a line here. I will add the statement for stepper motor control here. I will assign M3 as the bit to turn on the movement of the stepper motors. Load M3 and next we will use a special function DDRVA followed by D2 for the number of steps, D4 for the number of speed, Y0 for the output port for pulses, and Y1 for the direction control. Next, I will add another rung to switch off M3 when the stepper reaches its target position. I will start with load pulse M8029 special register, which will be turned on when the DDRVA instructions reach the target position. The output will be RSTM3, which will reset the M3 register bit. After I ran the test on the stepper motor, and found the issue, that sometimes the stepper motor won't run. I found that, because the stepper motor was already at its position, that is why it would not run. So, I decided to add one more run, to tell us what is the current position count of the stepper motor. According to the LE3U manual, the position counts from DDRVA instruction will be updated, and stored in the special 32 bits register D8132. Unfortunately, we can't directly read this register using the Modbus RTU protocol. So we will need to copy the value to the D register, that we can read. In this case, I will use the D6 register, and we will use DMOV instruction 32 bits instruction copy. I will start with load M8000 which is the always on register, and use special instruction DMOV, followed by D8132 and D6. I convert and download the code to the PLC. Okay, let's start the UDP client software. I will enter my ESP32 IP address and click connect. I will try to read the register D6 using RW red register 32 bits command. We should read 10,000 counts back. Next, I will try to set the target position of the stepper motor to zero position. We use the D2 as 32 bits register for the target position, so I will send command SW120. Now we can set M3 using the command SM131 to start the stepper motor movement.
as you can see, it is working. I felt that my UDP client software is quite difficult to use. So I improved the software to more user friendly. Let me show you. The software will query all the mapping registers and update the GUI. When I press the PLC push button, the software is updating the status. I can turn on and off PLC output here. The separate motor can be controlled as well. As well as analog input is being updated when I change the power supply voltage. I hope you like it. Please click like or subscribe. Hope to see you on my next video.